Well, hello everyone. Well, the panels look clean. You know, starting to build up on it again, but it rained yesterday and they're looking good. None of that nonsense that like we what we had last week. So here it is. Sun is beating down. Today was a magnificent production, solar production day. And we'll go a little bit in the details about that. I want to do a review on LV6548s. However, I would like to get a little bit more experience with them and time with them before I could tell you what I think about them. <laughs> Let's see what we have, what kind of a setup I have. And I can tell you right off the bat when it comes to LV6548s, I do not like that app that they have for the phone, the watch power for the phone. It's useless as a tits on the bull. Solar array, cleaned up everything, connected everything. Here's the finished thing. And if you remember grounding, I did it last week. During this week, I think everything looks pretty cool though. So, I hope this is not too shaky trying to find the best way to make the videos. String one is all these white background panels and my original 30 our next three and a half strings three and a solar are going to be on the end here's what I have here right now solar home those are my original 30 that I bought they were made in the December of 2018 that worked good there's three in a solar these are the last six that I ordered now today let's discuss what kind of production we have and how we monitor everything extremely happy with all four LV 6548s so far they performed as they should have for this kind of money I think they I think they cannot be beat when you really think about it this is 26 thousand watts of power that they can output at one time and as I said for the price you cannot beat it 26 kilowatts I think it will be enough, more than enough, for anything that I'm trying to do. Now, what we're trying to do to uh, discuss today is how do we monitor all of this and what will be the next steps. I have four Raspberry Pi 4 Bs with 4 gigabytes of RAM. Each Raspberry Pi is connected to one inverter and pulls data out of it. In addition to that, I have uh, I have inverter one and inverter two Raspberry Pi do one more duty each, and that is the number one does battery monitoring following this cable that goes down into Bluetooth receiver, which collects data for J from JKBMS balancers. The inverter two. Raspberry Pi does another duty and that is collect data from if you follow it down it goes into this plastic conduit down through it it collects data from a Victron smart shunt that is a nifty little tool and um, we can collect data from it and display it in Grafana or in a home assistant as we will see after we do uh, overview of the system as it is right now and then of course you guys saw the fuse block I decided to go with the fuses because the real the real DC circuit breaker it costs some serious money this I think will work fine there are 200 amps each I think that will work best for me for now these metal conduits our input and output for AC and DC power. I could have made it differently. I could have made it with the plastic ones. It doesn't matter. 
I just wanted to uh, try to make it look good and presentable and whatnot. The output from LV6548s, and there's four of them, go into this AC combiner box, which combines all the power from LV6548s into circuit breakers, 50 amp each. I know these are uh, double pole breakers. They have a split duties, so it doesn't matter. Maybe a little bit later I'll replace them because I have to order them. Home Depot doesn't sell it, Lowe's doesn't sell it. I might have to go to an electrical supply store, but this is what they had and I just grabbed two. I'm gonna go from there. This being an AC input side from a grid, grid input side, as you can see, I do not have anything there because I'm totally off grid since March 30th at around 5.30 p.m. And the same thing repeats for each LV6548. Of course, that's the uh, that's where the, all the uh, DC wires come in. And then, of course, this is the hookup for the solar. This is a PV1 and this is a PV2. I don't know why they have it backwards. I'd rather prefer having this as a PV1, but it doesn't matter. This is the way it's made. You do see communications, communication cables. And just follow the instructions if you ever get more than two or more than one. Just follow the instructions in the manual. That accurate, you can go with it. This is for this part. Let's go over there and see what we have for data collection and how we display it all. And here we are in my Grafana display. Before we proceed, I just want to continue a little bit from a previous part of the video where I showed those four Raspberry Pis collecting data. Now, since they're collecting data, what are they doing with it? Well, all of the data is passed to my server and InfluxDB is in charge of it, of collecting it and storing it for a future use. So that's the part I forgot to mention on the previous part of the video. Now, before we continue on this part of the video, I want to say one thing. Uh, I didn't come up with, with this. I didn't write the code or nothing like that. I was fortunate enough to find to find Jay Blance on a GitHub and his MPP Solar uh, project. Very good, always updated, and he's very responsive and open to the new ideas. I know some of you might not believe that, but that's just the way that I'm finding it to be. Everybody's experience might be a little bit different. Now let's go back to uh, to my Grafana setup. And once again, Jay Blends, thank you very much. Man, you've been an awesome, awesome help for the past year getting this up to this point. Thank you. Uh, here we are on my uh, page over here. Uh, I can actually fit a whole lot more data, but I didn't because I'm trying to make this visible on uh, mobile devices such as phones or maybe tablets. And it will show better. So, what do we have here? On this page, I'm showing uh, like a peak power output of a solar array in this uh, graph right here. And it shows how much power, what's the power output at any given time during the production hours. So my production hours do start kind of early, but they're not that much. Finally, once the uh, shading goes out, and I have a video on that too, once the shading goes out, the power production uh, peaks out fairly quickly to about 12.11 uh, kilowatts. And my batteries, my power walls are fully charged, fully charged by about 3.30, 4 o'clock. 
Uh, in the rest of this graph, you can see that the dryer was running. And on top of the dryer, you can see that um, AC was coming on. These little blips over here shows when the air conditioning was coming on. This is right here. You see a second part of the laundry being done in a dryer on the lower setting and also air conditioning coming up. Now, since my since my uh, power walls get charged fairly quickly, there's nowhere else for that power to go, so pro power production ramps down. And today, on uh, April 11th, the solar array produced everything I needed, and everything that I needed today was 48.74 kilowatt hours. I think that's astounding for 14.8 kilowatt uh, uh, 14, 14 14.8 kilowatt hour uh, solar array. Down here on the bottom, we see the uh, power wall state of charge. Next to it, it shows either positive or negative am I charging or discharging the power walls. Negative is discharging and positive is charging. Right now, being that it's about 8.30 p.m., we are pulling 2.44 kilowatt from from uh, power walls. I actually have a hot water heater running and a dishwasher running and all the lights and computers and whatnot. So that is my current home home load on a power wall. Now the apparent load, AC load on a home is about 2.2 kilowatts. If you take this uh, home load and divide it by power wall discharge at any moment, you will get your efficiency. You will get efficiency of uh, your uh, LV6548 or any other inverter in MPP family and more displayed right here. I think that's an interesting number to look at. On the right side, we have a heating, heating temperatures. That's also data that you can pull from inverters. Then I'm displaying a power wall uh, voltages here on the right. And below that is a monthly and daily, daily consumption. Uh, daily, uh, monthly and daily consumption of AC power. Uh, from the system. Now monthly consumption is skewed because I made changes, added the, added the rest of the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi, so I don't have that data available to me at this moment. So the monthly production is skewed. However, the solar array has produced almost, I think, uh, 380 kilowatt hours this month. And down on the bottom we are showing uh, uh, today's consumption of energy in 20 hours and 30 minutes of this day. And it's been 25.3 kilowatt hours. Now, uh, let's see some other graphs. On this screen we are showing the home load over time. And an interesting thing with Grafana is you can set this up to show anything you want to in this graph. Right now we are showing, uh, right now we are showing uh, uh, combined power output between uh, leg one and leg two of a split phase. In addition to that, you can only show maybe leg one or leg two, or you can show both legs what they're doing at the same time. In addition to that, you can show leg one, leg two, and you can sh you can combine add these two legs for your total uh, total load on your home at any time point that you have selected. On the right, we see a solar array voltages. Even though it's kind of dark outside there's still some voltage coming in from a solar array. However, it's not producing anything. So all of this data can help us later 
to uh, analyze or improve efficiency of our uh, solar array and uh, inverter setup. Now let's go to the third graph. We'll, I'm going to try to keep this as short as I can. Here we see that the lowest state of charge because of the rain yesterday um, my power walls were down to 49.3 percent before production began and you can see that from about 11.30 when 11.30, 11.45 and it started charging and then about 3.30 the power wall got full down in addition to that we have a power wall current and you can see it it's either positive or negative at in the morning you see it we get up we do things and the power wall current is being pulled and we are showing this part of this part of graph we're showing and then the production starts around 11:30 the max current I push into the power walls today is about 202 amps before it got fully charged around 3.30 where it kind of dies off and we, uh, we come to 7, 7.30 when the production ends and we can see continuous discharge from the power wall as I said I got a dishwasher going and a hot water heater going uh, down at the bottom Another interesting thing that we can show is uh, how much, uh, what was the energy output, total energy consumed output from each inverter. You can pull that data out and make it your own and show it over here if you're interested in seeing it. So from one, two, three, and four inverter, you see over here from 5.73 kilowatt hours to max on inverter two, at 7.01 kilowatt hours for a total of 25.52 kilowatt hours. All right, now we got all this data and we can show ton more data that is being collected. But I, at this point, I really do not need it. I'm going to play with it more later and try to make sense out of it. But there's more data that you can pull out of the shunt, and there's more data that you can pull out of your inverters. So, why I need all this data? Well, we are coming, I'm trying to uh, do a bunch of automation on the house. So, let's go to the home assistant. Here is, here is my home assistant homepage. Uh, every switch in the house has been changed to a uh, Z-Wave or a smart switch and it shows over here on the left. They can be manipulated to any way you want to. Uh, I have a weather page. We have a power wall charge discharge, state of charge. I have also included uh, sensors on... Uh, I have included the uh, uh, sensors from the front door from the door to garage to the back door in addition to that I have included the front door smart lock from a quick set then my home assistant can easily uh, uh, well my garage door opener is easily integrated into uh, home assistant arrows up and down shows you that I can open it or close it and then we do have a thermostat for the heating and air conditioning which is this part right here and then also included into home assistant is my uh, uh, my heat pump water heater and we can go through process of adjusting the temperature and you can also adjust from home assistant what type how you want it to work you can have it to work in a, you can have it work as a heat pump you can have a high demand uh, high demand probably has the upper and lower heater element working all the time then 
Purity Electric, only lower lower heater element working on it, or you can completely turn it off. And it tells you available hot water. It's probably going to turn off here, and it also tells you how much energy did it consume. Then I have addition of a temperatures from outside, temperatures and a humidity from uh, outside to a living room to a master bedroom to a garage and all that good stuff. Um, I am armed with all of this and then what I can start doing is making the automations through this. Once I get the electric car, I will add EVSC project, which is also included in uh, Home Assistant. And we will use all this sensor data to determine when to charge the car and how much to charge it. Um, it will be, you know, I think it will work really well with the solar project that I created and the solar panels that I installed and the inverters and you know you can actually have home assistant tell your inverters what to do you can probably if it's a high demand on a house and you want to preserve a batteries you can tell you can tell the home assistant to switch to grid power you can t you, your home assistant can tell your inverters to switch to the grid power to supplement if you are running low on a battery or you just don't want to use them or you know you got to charge your car extra that day because you're traveling tomorrow and whatnot so that's a part of autom that's an automation part of home assistant which can be set up over here on these pages which you go through configurations and you can do automations scenes scripts blueprints a new stuff whatever you want to do so I hope this gives you a um, better overview of what I'm trying to do with my home and a solar system that I installed I hope you guys um, find this video interesting uh, I know it's a long drawn um, technical video but I think this will serve a better purpose as we go forward with automations and a home assistant. And me being <laughs> me being a data geek, I like to look at all these numbers. I don't know how many people out there like the numbers, but I do like the numbers and I look at the numbers all the time because they tell you a bigger story of uh, what's going on overall in your home and your solar system and uh, uh, you can probably foresee issues if you know your numbers real well. Uh, long video, but I think this is a good introduction for a future for a future uh, part of the project that I'm trying to do or, or trying to achieve. Uh, I'm probably going to need somebody's help and have this finished and installed the way it needs to be. If you are guys are interested in the details of any of this I can probably make a video on one specific topic this is just a short overview there's a lot of work to be done in order for you just to get to this stage so if you guys are interested in a smart shunt if you guys are interested in um, um, Grafana setup influx DB setup or setting up your um, Raspberry Pis or whatever other device you might use or setting up your server to collect data or whatever you want to I can probably do it but trying to fit everything into what video will just make it too long and too boring but one of the next videos should be on a shunt or um, detailed report of the uh, power walls and how are they doing and what are the, my plans for the future I'm actually leaning towards putting one more uh, power wall in to collect all that energy but that's that's a story for the next time I hope you guys like the video and you'll have a good night